I'm Mike Giambattista, and I'm here today at the 2022 Retail Technology Show in London at the Freedom Pay Block. Joining me right now is Tim Mason, who is Vice President of Payments and E-Commerce at J.P. Morgan Chase. Tim, thanks for joining me. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. I, uh, I know you're busy. I know you've got a ton of stuff going on. I know that J.P. Morgan Chase has a ton of stuff going on. You're in the midst of a lot of it, but if you don't mind, there's a lot I want to dive into here because um, J.P. Morgan is the you know is at the center of so much of what's going on in payments. Um, let's dive right in. Absolutely. So we're seeing a lot of disruption and change in this space in particular. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase is driving a lot of that change, uh, responding to a lot of that change. Let's just talk about what you see from your perspective, what those changes are, and how J.P. Morgan is in the midst of them. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, we play a, a huge role in the disruption in the space, and actually, you know, we partner with many of the big fintechs that, that you see to help them expand internationally, help them ensure that they're operating in a com compliant manner across the, you know, across the globe. The disruption is also good for us as an organization as well, right? Because it's forcing us to look at ourselves, look at our product, and position ourselves for the next 10 years ahead. So if you look at some of the stuff that we've done, you know, we've launched the new digital bank in the UK. We've invested in our merchant acquiring capabilities to enable us to expand and support new markets for our clients, as well as building on our API infrastructure uh, to help our clients connect more easily to us. If you look at how we kind of set ourselves up, our JP Morgan payments division, so that combines merchant acquiring, it combines treasury, it combines trade finance and card issuing. So that allows us to give a holistic payments proposition to our clients, and it also allows us to have multiple eyes on the disruption that's going on kind of everywhere within the market. So yeah, I think ultimately our role in this, in this disrupting world is to kind of pick out the disruptions amongst the noise and bring these to our clients so that they're aware and they can improve their business as a result. Well, you brought up an interesting idea here and that is separating the signals, the actual usable, actionable stuff from all the noise out there. And, and it's not easy uh, and the volume of noise is, is just kind of ever increasing. I, I want to talk a little bit about the emergence of new payments technology and the growth of e-com, which I know you're deeply involved in. Let's talk yeah. about where JP Morgan sits in the midst of that. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I mean, obviously we've seen you know, a huge increase in the share of e-commerce as, as a percentage of total retail over the last couple of years. And I you know, think there's no signs of that, of that stopping, albeit it might be at a slower pace to what we've seen as a result of the pandemic. I think e-commerce is still evolving. We're seeing a lot of new payment methods that are springing up in, in, in markets driven by local preferences, um, which merchants really need to be aware of. I think, you know, take buy now, pay later, for example, right? We've seen an explosion in providers, not only on a global level, but also locally. And actually sometimes if you go onto the checkout page, you can see three, four buy now, pay later providers next to each other. So the, I think the question for merchants is balancing offering enough of these new payment methods versus you know, completely overwhelming the consumer with too many, uh, as is the case in some, some setups. But yeah, e-commerce itself, I think you know, we all know that's growing. I think what's interesting now is in the in-store environment, right? Historically, not too much has changed there, but I think we're going to see a lot of changes over the next kind of five years where we blur and blur more the lines between online, e-commerce, as well as in-store. If you're able to take out the crystal ball a little bit, what do, you, what do you think those changes might look like? Yeah, so I think, you know, if we, if we look at the, the setup in in-store payments today, we're seeing the blurring of the lines with the likes of QR codes that you can, you know, order at restaurants with and even pay with. You can order at iPads, some quick service restaurants. But, you know, I'd love to have a crystal ball and be able to tell you, but I think, you know, We've seen some pretty big technology players who are entering the, the point of sale space, right? And I think that's only good. And that could bring more flexibility, um, you know, a better kind of customer first approach to, to install payments that maybe we haven't really seen before. And I think that would be, a, you know, an area where I'm, I expect to see a lot of change. Let's talk a little bit about the, the way partnerships work in this space. I mean, obviously, yeah. JP Morgan and Freedom Pay are very much intertwined in the way we do business. 
Yeah. Um, how do you see those kinds of things evolving? Yeah, so look, I think partnerships are key. I think if we look at our own partnership from an omni-channel perspective, right? So omni-channel um, can drive better customer loyalty, better customer conversion, and ultimately drive a better customer experience across the board. So the stakes are pretty high, and payments plays a key role in this. And if you can kind of group together that data across the different channels and make sense of it, that can be really insightful to merchants. Us as JP Morgan, we want to work with the best partners that can provide the best technology to our clients. But it can be difficult to pick the right ones, right? Because there's so many, they change depending on the enterprise space, the mid-market. So for us, it's really important to understand, are we aligned on both the strategy and the technology? And this is where you know we've driven great success working with you guys in the US in a range of different sectors. And now we're actually really excited to take this partnership to Europe and to expand and bring value to clients here. So <clears throat> let, let's break away from the tactical stuff for a moment. The thing I think everybody really wants to know, and, and to be serious for a moment, JP Morgan, as big as you are, has a unique ability to see patterns and trends that most people probably will never ever get to discern. Yeah. Um, so from your perch, way up there, let's talk about some of the trends in retail. Let's talk about some of the things that you see that maybe others don't. Uh, that could be potential opportunities or potential hurdles out there. Yeah, definitely. So I think starting with e-commerce, certainly I referenced it earlier in terms of we're seeing more and more payment options out there, right? And merchants, it's all about maximizing their revenues. So they want to be offered the right relevant payment methods depending on what markets they're in. So that's one key trend. I think we're seeing um, a greater increase in cross-border e-commerce. So more markets are coming online, we're seeing transactions go from you know, Asia Pacific across to the US, vice versa. So that's another kind of key focus and increase that we're seeing. The other one that is interesting is more and more integration of kind of treasury services into the payment experience. So there's a number of kind of payment fintechs now that are launching treasury services that integrate better with the kind of the payment experience and it's a new kind of growth channel for them. You know, we've had our treasury division together with our acquiring division for a number of years now, and we're bringing these two together because I think the more that you can embed financial experiences into the customer flow, I think the more value you can create. So I think those are kind of three key trends on the, on the e-commerce side. I've touched upon some of the in-store ones. Um, you know, we're seeing, I would say, less kind of physical retail, but more blurring of, you know, it could be a transaction through an app in store, which is, you know, technically online, but you're still in store. Um, so, you know, the new different types of way to pay in store, I think, is really interesting. But, you know, in terms of what we see and what our advantage is, you take us in the US, for example, as one of the biggest issuers, um, where we are, you know, one in four transactions almost, we can both see all that transaction data on the one side, and also we've got a big share of the merchants on the other side. So we can kind of tie those two things together to look at some really interesting kind of patterns of spend and uh, looking at customers' locations based on stores and stuff like that. So the better kind of we bring that together and package it for our merchants, the better value that they'll get out of that. So <clears throat> what would next level commerce look like if you were to define it for your merchants? Next level commerce. So for the merchants, I think, you know, it's all about maximizing their acceptance rates and following them quickly and easily into the markets that they want to be. Now, you know, one part of that is technology, right? And making sure that they've got the right tools to get integrated properly, to be able to accept payments, the right payment methods in the right markets. But also it's kind of a proactive guidance, you know, that the landscape is pretty complex today. So they need kind of a trusted advisor that can help them with regulatory challenges. They need a partner that's going to be there for them when they've got challenges with um, payment issues. So it's kind of the fully rounded partner that supports them from a technology perspective as a trusted advisor and has those expertise and knowledge of kind of trends, not just in their market, but internationally. So, um Glad you mentioned partnerships because I know that Freedom Pay values the relationship with JP Morgan Chase. I know you guys work very interconnectedly, so thank you for that. Yeah. Um, also, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. I know you're busy and you're running off to meeting after meeting after meeting. But um, again, uh, Tim Mason is Vice President of Payments e-commerce at JP Morgan Chase. Thank you for your time. 
And uh, thank you for tuning in. Join us for the next segment at 11.30. We'll be live right back here next time.